So when I would set these constructions up, these were looked almost like strings, you know, like you're kind of compressing a lot of information in them. Um, these symbolic sculptures are representing like taking a single string. We know about string theory and we've heard a lot about it in, in mathematical physics. I'm very fascinated by that field. And I was always interested in what would it be like to take something that we can't even see or represent by any means except mathematically, and what would it be like to enlarge these things a trillion fold, you know, something that is much thinner than a single strip of hair. Um, if you can enlarge it, what would we see if we could kind of unpack it? And so um, the space and place that I've been showing these kinds of constructions and doing these objects that are trying to put information ideas together about, about how the human brain works, um, you are often showing works in museum spaces, art museum spaces, or galleries such as this one. This is the Ronald Feldman Fine Arts Gallery. And I, I will speak very briefly about this. Hopefully, we'll talk about this, that in fact, you do need champions in the arts that understand and foster these kinds of collaborations. And I can tell you, and I hope we talk about this some, is um, that in fact, none of this work None of these constructions, none of these experiments in integrating art and science technology can happen without some very bold individuals and organizations to actually foster these things. Otherwise, they do not flourish. So Ronald Feldman is one individual, as an example, who has over 40 years integrated, allowed, and, and fostered these kinds of, of integrative studies. But as you'll see, lots of images of the human brain and the human nervous system that uh, play throughout this. Um, this. These kinds of artworks directly contrast the kinds of uh, uh, model making that we'll talk about tonight that Harvey has described and alluded to in the uh, art of science learning, where in fact, we're using all kinds of of materials to give form to our thoughts, ideas, views, knowledge, and to create and share new knowledge through some symbolic constructions that people built. And they're not particularly uh, works, they're not meant or intended to be necessarily works of, of fine art, but they're another expression of giving um, ideas some kind of visual form so that they can be discussed and, and um, understood in depth. But <clears throat> I just want to say a couple words of these and then, and then uh, conclude here a moment. But these paintings that are, that are actually painted from, from the reverse and reverse side using this painting process that I, I invented, they have all kinds of elements that talk about and actually incorporate the science in the art. The, the science is actually embedded in the art, literally and figuratively speaking. In, in these constructions. So they are meant to um, evoke all kinds of emotions and conceptual connections with the individuals who are viewing them, and intentionally so. And so in other words, you're, you're invited to bring your experiences, and not just the aesthetic experience you have, but your knowledge, your tacit explicit knowledge when you're looking at these works and to show you they're often the engineering that goes into actually building these very, very layered complex things that are, have all kinds of special coatings and processes applied to them. They really do involve science, technology, engineering, math, every detail of that. The whole STEM is actually integral to them. And um, maybe in the course of conversations and what we talk about here, um, that will become a, a more evident. But I can relate to every single remark that was made by our panelists here, Chris and Martin and Harvey, in the way that we are approaching and looking at this grand synthesis that is so natural, much like these constructions, again, at the Ronald Feldman Gallery. This is a recent show called Split Second, where, in fact, the questions that were posed, um, I had a little video here that uh, just flashed like a tachistoscope that flashes these subliminal images. They were at the entrance to the gallery. And um, I would project them in different spaces just to suggest that every single thing that is exhibited here is interpreting, capturing a moment, a fleeting moment, 
of what's happening sort of in a cognitive affective experience. And um, as you go up to the paintings and look at these constructions, you actually see that. You can actually see what I'm saying. They're actually embedded in these works. So you go on a bit of a treasure hunt to understand where you are relative to the object you're looking at. They're all kind of brain-based paintings and so forth. So if you read a title, like one of the paintings was called Love, and in parentheses, Thalamus, most people walk around with their their iPhones and their Googling information. And the invitation here was instead of making it so text heavy, somebody could, could embark on simply a, a, with their search engine to go through and understand where they were in the human nervous system when you were looking at these constructions. So in fact, you could learn as much as you were willing to explore without burdening a viewer with masses of amounts of information on what's behind there. But in fact, they are that conceptually layered, and uh, they, those strings and objects and symbolic paintings and metaphorical constructions are in fact intensely layered, and the invitation is for you to go on that exploration, to do your own uh, creative and critical thinking, but most importantly, to bring to the work your own challenges, whether you're in the education field or a scientist or a practitioner in the arts and uh, all aspects of it, and I'll leave you with uh, just a last couple di diagrams and drawings here. That neural-like tissue you see there and the colors, every single detail of these paintings are really coded to the whole neurochemistry, the our neurobiology. And so I'm painting the kind of neuroplasticity you know, that we see in the brain. And I'm trying to, again, use all aspects of my own experiences and, and uh, using sort of the body as a a library and your, your, the world sort of as going back to almost a renaissance approach to looking at nature and understanding principles and process in nature. And to interpret as best I can and set those questions up that in fact lead us to understand what is happening in us when in fact we are thinking and thinking creatively or critically or analytically. And uh, that was the essence of these construction. So I think um, I will kind of call it here and just tell you, again, like those objects and images that are connected to those paintings, they invite your questions and they invite your interpretations and they're completed by your experiences and connections with these works. So thank you.